Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. In order to visualize the anatomy of the posterior mediastinum, the heart needs to be removed from the cadaver as well as the left and the right lungs. When we do this, we can see the arch of the aorta passing upward and giving off its named branches. And behind it then, passing downward, is the trachea. And the trachea bifurcates at the sternal angle level into the right and the left primary bronchus. And in the bifurcation area, we find a tremendous number of lymph nodes and nerves. When we look at the anatomy then further down on the cadaver from the tracheal bifurcation, we can clearly see the esophagus as it's passing from the throat region down through the diaphragm, the esophagus. On each side, coming downward, are the vagus nerves, the right and the left vagus nerves. As they get into this area, they lose their identity as to being a right or a left vagus nerve. For in this region, they are giving off branches to the esophagus branches that will extend along the primary bronchi to this pulmonary nerve plexus in the area of the tracheal bifurcation. And then as they continue down, they spray out, giving branches onto the esophagus. Both left and right side branches become intertwined. This is called the esophageal plexus. And from this point on, the right and the left vagus nerves are no longer individuals. This esophageal plexus will eventually pass through the diaphragm to supply abdominal muscles uh, through the inferior surface of the diaphragm. It is the parasympathetic supply to the greater portion of the abdominal organs all the way down including the greater portion of the large intestine. When we look at the anatomy from the side, then, we see some other structures. Again, above and looking into the right thoracic cavity, we can see the individual sides of the bodies of the thoracic vertebrae. And in this area now, again, the esophagus, and immediately adjacent to it, a very thin tubular structure, the thoracic duct. It is found right underneath the esophagus and adjacent to the aorta, which is more on the left side of the midline than being on the midline. Thoracic duct recall is passing upward, bringing all of the lymphatics to the junction of the internal jugular vein and the left subclavian vein. Also in this area, we can see intercostal arteries and veins. Intercostal arteries, of course, coming from the aorta, the veins draining the intercostal spaces, and now passing upward to this very large vein that runs along the sides of the vertebral column, which is the azygous vein. The azygous vein has some continuation from the abdominal area. It is the primary drainage, however, of the right intercostal veins and it terminates at this location where we have cut it, where it dumps into the superior vena cava. 
In addition to this, we will see in this area at the junction of the bodies of the vertebrae with the heads of the ribs, a long string-like nerve, and this nerve is called the chain ganglia of the sympathetic trunk. Sympathetic nerves arise from the thoracic vertebral levels and from the lumbar vertebral levels. They pass upward into the head and neck region to supply that area as well as giving off branches into the trachea, esophagus, pulmonary plexus, and to the heart. These individual chain of ganglia, and the ganglia are rounded areas, swollen regions, if you will, along this chain. And individual segments not only come out from it to go to the structures I've mentioned, but they also go along the arteries as a perivascular nerve plexus, sympathetic in nature. In this region specifically, some of these nerves now start swinging off towards the front of the vertebral bodies from approximately the mid region of the vertebral column from about the thoracic three, four, five, six area in general, nerves will come off and coalesce as the greater splanchnic nerve. And here is one of the filaments to it. Further down in the lower thoracic segment, we have a few that join together for, to form the lesser splanchnic nerve and this has to be visualized by almost removing the diaphragm because it's around the corner in the deep posterior thoracic cavity. And then from the lower one or two thoracic segments will be one other nerve, the least splanchnic nerve. In addition to this, we will see the intercostal arteries, and even here, showing through the periosteum of the bone, you can see an intervertebral disc showing up as a light band coming through this area. The opposite side of the body, the left side of the body, can best be seen again in overview. The left side have the identical structures for the most part that we've been talking about. It has the sympathetic trunk running along the sides of the bodies of the vertebrae. But most importantly, we can see here now the arch of the aorta above that has been cut, following it upwards a slight distance, it immediately turns downward as the arch of the aorta. And then this portion coming down is the thoracic aorta, giving off intercostal arteries at each and every one of the vertebral segments. The chain ganglia again along the heads of the ribs, sympathetic in nature. As well as a single vein that drains the lower intercostal spaces. It too is a, an azygous system of veins, and it is specifically called the hemiazygous vein. It only supplies the lower four or five intercostal spaces because above that area, there is usually a large vein that feeds into it called the accessory hemiazygous vein. On this specimen, however, the hemiazygous vein is all by itself. The accessory hemiazygous vein was not found in its classical position, but it actually fed upward towards the left brachiocephalic vein. The hemiazygous vein then crosses the midline on the vertebral bodies 
and in so doing, it joins in with the accessory over on the right side in this location. Ex the azygous vein upward and downward along the right side of the vertebral bodies, the hemiazygous vein low down in the thoracic vertebral bodies on the left. Accessory hemiazygous above that. Review then this anatomy because there are multiple structures in here that must be learned in detail. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.